What up? What up? What, what up? up? What's what up? up? How y'all doing today, man? I hope y'all doing okay, man. And we want to start this off with just saying to you guys, you lovers, you smoochers out there, a very, 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 very special happy Valentine's Day to you guys out there that are celebrating this day here. But um, as you can see from the title, we're going to be bringing you guys a story today, guys. This is not a joke. This is not fabricated in any form of way. This is what really happened to us. In Haiti. In Haiti, yes. We almost died in Haiti. All right. Um, as you guys know, my wife is Haitian. You know, she's Haitian American. You know, her parents are from Haiti. Um, they're actually from the same village. So we got to see a lot of her family when we went to Haiti. You know, most everybody we got to see. And um, we went for for um, a going away party for, um, you my know. My grandmother, my grandmother who had passed away. Um, well, eventually she passed away um, here in America, but we had to fly her out back to Haiti. Excuse my voice too guys because I'm kind of feeling sick. I just came back from Atlanta. I got a cold while I was there. The weather was terrible but I'm rambling on. But anyways she passed away and then we had to ship the body over to Haiti. So mind you my husband is like he obviously he's look at me. He's light right? I, 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 I'm, like they say in Creole. I'm blunt. <laughs> I'm blunt people. Yeah so he sticks out like a thumbnail as like Especially compared to my family because everybody's complexion is basically like my complexion. So he stuck out very, very much. Yeah. Now hold on one second, one second before we even start the story. That's just a little tip of the iceberg. Before we start the story, go ahead if you haven't already. Go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up. Go ahead and comment. Like this. Subscribe if you haven't. Right now. Do that right now. And if you're Haitian, you better have subscribed. Please. Right now. Right now. Feli Kunyala. All right, back to what you were saying. Like she was saying, I'm, I'm light skinned and Haiti, I stuck out like a sore thumb, you know, thumb, whatever. You know what I'm saying? You don't see very many light skinned people there. So, so when you do see them, you know, you stick out, you know, and everybody just assumed I was a white guy. I'm a white guy, I'm a white guy. But actually, after doing my DNA test, I actually did find out I, I do have He's white in white and black. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I, I really st stuck out. And um, just to start off with this story, um, let me tell you, this was the most amazing trip I have been on. And um, just to love the people there showed us was just unbelievable. It was just amazing. And, and the food, the taste of the foods that we ate just tasted so fresh and just rich. Just, uh, it, it's unexplainable just the taste and quality yeah, of the so food. so organic. Like it's not processed. There aren't any hormones injected in these animals. Fresh chicken. Like it just tasted like love. Like mm -hmm. I don't, it just didn't taste like any preservatives or any crap that we are just like consuming here in the States. Because everything there is like you have to grow your own tomatoes, grow your own fruits, and that's how you get it. And it's just amazing. It like makes you really appreciate organically made fruit. Yeah, so alright. So um I lost my train of thought. Anyway we arrived we arrived to Haiti, you know what I'm saying? We had mad love from the time as soon as we got off the plane, y'all. You know what I'm saying? It was just it was chaos. Cause soon we got a plane for being a US when you have a US passport. You have to pay ten dollars. They want you to pay ten dollars just to leave the airport. You can't, it won't, customs will not let you leave the airport until you pay them ten dollars. I got pissed off. So Rosalind she Flipped out, she's screaming in the airport, talking to the top of her lawn. I'm like, I'm trying to tell her, calm down. You know what I'm saying? You ain't trying to be playing. We ain't we, 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 we in a foreign country. Calm down, baby. Calm down. Let's just give me a little $10 and go about our business. Like, you know what I'm saying? For real. So, anyway, we pay the $10. We get out the airport. So, as soon as we got the airport, you know, we have a um, shout out to Cousin Carol. She was our, like, she was like our tour guide in Haiti. She showed so much love, and I thank the Lord for Cousin Carol yeah. in Haiti. She was like the tour guide for us. Um, so we get out of the airport, you know, we put all our stuff in the cousin Carol there, we put all our stuff in the car, you know what I'm saying? And, but we put in some guys helping us put the stuff all in the car. 
I'm like, okay, I'm just assuming they with cousin Carol. You Somebody know what I'm saying? They, that just, we know. they just loading everything all up in it. You know, we so you excited. Like, we welcome up. to Haiti. Yeah, it's the guy <laughs> come up, he come up to me, welcome to Haiti. So we're like, me, even said, me and my okay. man, we're like, yo, we must, like, you know, they must be with Carol. Exactly. We think they family. Okay, okay. I'm like, damn, they're showing us so much love. So we put everything in the card and, and they hand out their hand. <laughs> we're like what what just happened we just got played we just got boozled. played man it turns out they're just like you know people in, just hustling in, yeah hustling they help they look for tourists so you're like sticking out then they just follow you and help you and then you know they need their money so they're just hustling but it was three of them you know what i'm saying we got three people with their hands out so you know what I'm saying? We gave them something, but we couldn't, we couldn't, you know, give everybody yeah, something. Yeah, I'm gonna give them like five dollars. You know, y'all bust that on down. <laughs> so. But um, you know, that's how the trip started, and you know, from there we made some stops at family house and everything, and um, we stopped through family house. You know, we had a few beers and everything, chit chat with a few people. You know what I'm saying? Got to see like I got to see people really struggling out here in this world, man. It's, seen some people really going through some things and you have to be truly thankful to live in um, a country where there's so many opportunities here and it's a lot it ain't no opportunities yeah, over there um, you know what i'm saying like you can't walk up anywhere and you know fill out a job application get a job within the next week it's like all they're relying on is their family that's in the states like especially if you have family from native or well, different countries and everything, I'm pretty sure you're familiar with it. Like if you're Hispanic or anything of that sort, you know your family relies on you in the states because the opportunities that we're given here in America are not available there. It's not. So it makes you appreciate things so much more. And yeah. so you know what I'm saying. After we after our first stop was in Port-au-Prince. It was like right by the airport, the house we went to. It was cousin, our cousins, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, your cousins, everything. So um, we stopped there, had a few beers, Kit Kat. So we boom, we, we get back in the car, continue our journey. Cause Rosalind, her her family is from um, Declo. Um, that's a village. I'm talking about way, way back in the boom docks. Um, no electricity, no running water. Um, you shower in the lake. You bathe in the lake, or somebody go get you a bucket from the lake, and then you know they have like a little, little um, aluminum, you know, little outdoor shower set up. You just go in aluminum and bathe up from the lake water. Saying, but the real OGs there, they, they go straight in the lake. They don't, they don't go get no bucket of water and come to the little aluminum thing. That they the OGs, just, they just right in the lake, just, you know what I'm saying, just get in there. Um, so her family's from way back in the bush, like I said, it's no electricity, no nothing there. No running water, nothing. Nothing, it's nothing. But some of the most humblest people and, and showed the most hospitality, the best hospitality I've ever experienced in my life. Um, so, you know, let's keep the story moving. Um, so we get there the first day, the first night, everybody's happy to see us, you know what I'm saying? You know, I'm in a place where I don't speak the language, so you know, it's hard to understand. And I get a little bit of things, cause you know, I just got a type of, you know, game. You know, so I understand a few little things, you know what I'm saying, what they're saying, and you know what I'm saying? I can communicate a little bit, but it's still hard being in a place where you don't speak the language. Everybody's showing mad love, you know, this is the day of the, um, the week, the you know, the day before the funeral. Um, so everybody showing mad love. They had big mommy, her mother threw a big party in the village. She talked to about they bought generators, they had electricity for one night only. Yeah. They had electricity for one night only. I'm talking about Poppy. Poppy bought um he bought um a disco ball, everything. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about yeah, in the middle of the um, village, you got we got a big disco ball. I'm talking about we don't they done put out all the dominoes table. Cheers, about, we got a DJ, we got a DJ there. I'm talking about mommy done, she done pulled out all expenses. You know, for a big party for her, her grand, you know, her mother's going away. You know what I'm saying, cause um, her mother is a is a well respected person in the village. She's very well respected, and it's it's crazy. I seen people walk. They say they walk hours just to come be a part of this. And they walk hours. I kind of like, wow, that's amazing. Just how many people showed up to the party, the wake and stuff. It was amazing. So you know what I'm saying. You know, I, you know, I get my drink on, right? So, you know, so wherever I go, I'm going to find me some drink. So, um, um, you know, I was on my little drink all night. I'm on that good barbecue all night. We drinking and having a good time. You know what I'm saying? You know, Roslyn, um, she having a good time. So, so what? She hanging out, hanging with family. Um, and we just hung out the first night. We just hung out all night. You know what I'm saying? Um, one thing, though, about this story. 
The one thing though, they is going on, um, the people there, well, they, they gonna ask you for them dollars. All day they gonna ask you for them dollars, them dollars. They just think because you from America that you just have money. That you're wealthy, you're rich. You know what I'm saying? Not everybody, yeah. but some people are gonna be bugging you to death about money. And it was this one dude, he was, he just kept giving me the sign. Kept, Someone that's not even part of our family, first of all. He just kept going like that. I'm like, baby, who was that? You know him? That's part he of He was family? just somebody who basically lived within the villages and he, you know, found his way to the party. Well, there's nothing wrong with that because my grandma, that's how she is. She's open to everybody. There's so many people in the area that my grandma has just fed. Like, that's why she's so respected because my grandma is not the person. She won't eat alone. Like, whoever else is around who's hungry too, my, my grandma was known to feeding other people's children as well. So, anyways, he was there. We didn't have no problem with it. But what started happening is he sees my husband... And takes it upon himself to keep using this gesture. You think I'm a bank. Like this. And I'm like, I see it happening. And then, you know, my husband, he doesn't play it. So, like, his guard starts to come up, like. Yeah, yeah. And I'm on that good barbecue. You know so, what I'm saying? I, like, remember, we're in the middle of a village. I mean, yeah. let, me just, let me just tell you. We're in the middle of a village. you like, where did you get liquor from? Oh, no. Riley got a cousin. You know yes. what I'm saying? We, we would chit chat it up, you know what I'm saying? I kept giving him 20, I give him 20 dollars, US dollars, you know what I'm saying? He goes somewhere, he get the liquor, come on back. So now we you know, now we got a good drink, we got music, vibe, we vibing all oh, good, everything good. My buddy just steady in the cup. Yeah. Steady in the cup. I'm like, who this is? Now I done snapped on him. I'm ready to fight him, everything, you know what I'm saying? Like, hold on, man, I'm tired of you asking me for money and everything. So that was the first incident. And so they continued to party. The party lasted till 12 o'clock the next day. And it started like at 6 or 7 p.m. No, it was probably like around 8 o'clock. Started. started, okay. It started about 8 p.m. at night. And it lasted to about 12 p.m. the next the day. The next day. Because <laughs> when in Haiti, if you get that, that opportunity that came is like once in a lifetime. For real. So Electricity, everything. They took full advantage of it. There was no sleep. Team, no sleep. No, they partied all night. And um, so we we eventually went to sleep. I'll say about four o'clock, three four o'clock. Mm -hmm, in the morning. We went to sleep inside um her grandmother's house. Um, so some half of us slept in, and it's a two rooms. So half of us slept in this side. Another half slept in the, with um Rosalind's aunt on her side of the house. And it's like a it's like a wooden door in between the rooms. So you could just knock on a wood and you know speak in between the woods. And um. So we went to sleep, so about four o'clock in the morning, all chaos breaks loose. We wake up out of sleep. Everybody jump up out of sleep because there's so much commotion and noise going on. So they're fighting outside. Yo, you hear just like tears falling. And but I'm, I just had a feeling it was gonna happen. I don't know, like my intuition was so right because I just felt it. I felt <clears> it <throat> happening. So as soon as it happened, I was like, Damn, I knew it was coming. <laughs> yeah, man. So they start fighting outside. So mommy jump up. She jump up out of her bed. She go out there. We all jump up. She go out there. She's talking to everybody. Um, you know, used to tell, tell this part of the story. Okay. So what happened basically? There was a guy that came to the party. He was not supposed to be there. Basically, his father. He he's supposedly like some type of killer or something like that. So he wound up being at the party. He had rivals at the party itself, and he was already like a known killer in the area. And he, he, he look at he acted for trouble. You I come to a party where your enemy at. And of course, like you know, <laughs> you guys are probably thinking like, oh, how is he walking? Around? He's a murderer. He's like, he's walking around free. This is the villages. So like. God forbid something were to happen to you there. There is nobody to call. The police is probably like three hours out of the damn villages. So this guy is. And they ain't, and, and, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on. I have you said that. She said the police by about three hours outside the village. Let me tell you about that. I forgot that part of the story. We got on our way coming to the village. We got we had roadblocks up, and cousin Carol had to pay fifty dollars to get us through the roadblocks. Fifty dollars, bro. Because we're Americans. Bro, just to get through the... So, the, so the police, I don't think you want to call them anyway. I don't think too much going to happen now. They, you know, a lot of corruption going on anyway with them. Yes, <laughs> they're already corrupted officers as it is. So then they start fighting, everything like that. My mom goes out. She's running. She falls in the mud piles. 
Like, she's just like, let me pray for him. Let me pray for him. Everybody's like, just going crazy. It's just And then so the dude, much. I don't speak girl, but she translated to me what the dude said. This dude's the dude that was fighting when mommy broke up. This dude had a nerve to say like, um, he told mommy like, basically like, you think you better than us now? Mm. You know, like, cause you're in America and stuff, you know, blah, blah, blah. That's what he said, right? Yeah. So that's pretty much what he said. So like, wow. So that's the first night, you know, eventually they get him on out the village and he going about his business and the party continues. We go back in the bed, we go to sleep. They still party, we wake up. Still music, party. still party. Music still going, domino still being slapped on the table, everything. They hanging out good. They, they, they really hanging out. Seriously. So, so, um. The next day is next the day actual funeral. It's the actual funeral. Um, we prepare for the funeral, you know, this is the hard part. You know, we go to the funeral. You know, it's a lot of tears, a lot of crying, all that, you know. It was a beautiful funeral. Like, the whole, I'm talking about, they had bus loads of people. I'm talking about literally, I don't know how many buses, maybe 10 buses just full of people. You know, it was like two, three buses, busing them back and forth, but they did it about 10 times. The church was so packed, people all out the doors. And then in Haiti, they, um, from the from the church, they just the walk, they, they walk, walk directly was, to the graveyard. It was probably like over 600 people there. It like, was mad people. It was amazing. It was really, it was, it beautiful. was very honorable for my grandmother. And she deserves it. Like, she truly deserves it. And, um, so, you know, after the funeral, everybody go back to the, um, to the house to eat, get food and all that good stuff. You know what I'm saying? So we eat, we have a good time. You know, it's a sad feeling. You know, everybody just sitting around just showing their respect. So, you know what I'm saying? Today's more turned down. And um, so by that by nighttime, but remember we said there's no electricity, no nothing. So when they get when they get dark, that's it. It's pitch black. It's, it's pitch black. Only thing you got is your you, cell phone. Inside of like the little room that we're in, mind you, there's no windows. There's oh, no, yeah, so there is no circulation of air going around. Me and Robert and my brother is on one like queen size bed, and then my mom is sleeping on the twin size bed. So it's four people. We're like damn near in a four by four box with no circulation of air going yeah. on. No you, window. The window do not open at all. Like you could hear yourself breathe because it was just <laughs> so congested in there. So a uh, uh, good way. The way we got through the night is like. You have to go take a bath for like every three hours. You have to go just take you a little quick yes. bath. Yes, my sister Ooh. Angie was doing the most, yo. She would come out. <laughs> I forgot about Angie. Man, Angie would come out like with a bucket, man, and just out of nowhere, she would get this bucket of water and just splash it all over herself. It was like 11 o'clock at night. She's like, yo, I feel like I'm on a beach right now. She was so happy to get some water. It was terrible. It was terrible. Yeah, man. So that night, uh, me and Roslyn, we was laying down and we was like, Baby, I don't feel right tonight. We, yeah, both, we, we both were told both each like other, our like, nerves. Something, something don't feel right. I don't. I, I feel on. I don't feel. I slept the night before. I slept good. I don't know if it because I was on. I probably because I was on that good oil, that good Bible cool all day too. But I slept good. And I, but tonight it felt crazy. It felt something felt. I could feel it in the air. It just felt weird. <laughs> and so um, we, me and Rosa, sit up all night just looking crazy. Now at the top of the the door is like a little glass. It's a little glass window, and, and, and if, if if you see any type of light from a flashlight or a phone, you you're gonna see it. Get you're gonna closer. see that glare. Like when a car, like when a car, it could be way, a car could be way further. I'm talking about a mile away, but you're gonna see that little little light from that because window. Because it's pitch black. pitch black, so whatever speck of light that you see, it will gleam in. So me and Robert, we was like, you know, they. Um, if we see some type of light or something like that, we know something going down because mm -hmm. we felt it like, we was, baby, like, how you feeling? I was like, baby, I don't feel right. It was like me and him were both like, our connect, our senses was going off, like freaking at full throttle. <laughs> so, um, you know, we stayed up pretty much all night, you know, and um, so like, I don't know what time it was because I think our phones were dead. No, my phone was on, it was probably like 10 o'clock. Oh yeah, your phone was on, your phone yeah. was on. All right, so it's probably like 10 o'clock, so um, about maybe a couple of hour, hours, about 11 or 12, we hear a gunshot. Boom, from, boom. From a distance, though. The first shot was from a, like, it was far. 
And then that's when our eyes, we like, we was like all I can see is the white part of her eyes because you just split black. I can't see nothing else. So she, we like, oh my God, that sounded like a gunshot. But it sounded, it sounded like far. Yep. Like, but the village road is so long to get into the village. It sounded like somebody was coming, you know, like they shot way mm -hmm. further down. So then, then another shot rang out. Boom! And it sounded like, okay, the inside. She, her grandma, getting closer. Yeah, it getting closer. Then the next one was like, it sounded like they inside the damn gate. Because you know, the gate is, is a pretty big yard. So it sounded like, and we live, and her grandmother lived right on the river. And it's the first houses. It's like the first houses you see when you enter the village. So it sounded like, oh my God, they in the yard. So then I get my eyes up, set up a whole freaking so, booby so, trap. So when, um, hold on, yeah, you're missing some parts. So when that, that last shot, that sound like it's right at the window. Sound like it's right there. Her mother jump up. Her, her mother jump out and she fainted. I'm like, oh my God, this is real. I'm like, oh my God. And Rosalind panic and she hides, she runs and hides underneath the bed. She scrambled, get underneath the bed. I'm like, oh my God, it's real. But I'm a man. You know what I'm saying? It's just me and David in here. We ain't got no guns, no weapons, no knives, no nothing. So we gotta, um, we, we got, I can't show him. Like, man, I'm just nervous as y'all. I'm saying, mommy fainted. She hiding underneath the bed. And the dogs you know are outside. The dog, oh yeah, she has a million dogs in there. Yeah, there's so many dogs in the yard, and the dogs was maybe like maybe like 15 freaking dogs out there, um, going crazy. So like my heart is racing. You like you could tell everybody was just on full guard, and then my sister is right there next door. But as you guys know, um, as he said, there's like a panel covering that. So I get so scared, I rip the panel apart. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, yo, yo, oh my god, like Rhonda, they're coming, they're coming. I'm like, I'm so scared. Yeah, yeah cause all you know, you hear a lot of stories about people getting kidnapped and you know, Haiti. Then we was thinking about what happened the night before with the man, the killer man, and all the stuff, the events that happened at the party and the dude who I got into it with. So it was a lot. It was all these thoughts run through our mind, like, oh, yo, somebody coming to try to get us, yeah, to kidnap us, and or they something. know that we were there. And they know that the, basically the Americans are in town. So to them, it's probably an opportunity to prevail. It's like, you know? Yeah, man. So boom, mommy faints. So I'm like, oh my God. She run underneath the bed. I'm like, oh my God. So me and David, he jump up. We look at each other. So we can't, we, we being dead quiet. We tell everybody, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. We tell them next door to be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. And it's like, you can see the light coming closer yep. into the, to the doorway. We're like, everybody like, shh. We just tell everybody, be quiet next door. We tell them to be quiet. So me and David, we just stooped down. We ain't got nothing, but but we got a broom. So we just got the broom. We stooped down, just aiming, aiming at the door. We just ready like, that's all we could do. We ain't got no, nothing else. They got a gun. We just got to fight. Fight our way up out of this. And you know, I ain't gonna just lay down. Oh, you come take me. Oh, I just go with you. Nah, I'm gonna fight till I die. Plus I got my wife and my mother-in-law here. I ain't finna go out like that. You know what I'm saying? We gonna have to just fight it out in here. So, um, you know, we just wait, wait, wait. We kept seeing this light move around from window to window and stuff. Like, damn, what's going on? And it's like, but, you were sitting there, like, waiting for something to happen. Time was going by. Time was going by. I honestly felt like I was just waiting. Like, you know, waiting for somebody to come in with a weapon or something like that. So, underneath the bed, I'm texting Robert's mom, my mother-in-law. And I'm like, yo, call the U.S. Embassy right now. <laughs> I panicked. Yeah, but. yeah. She texted my mom. I wish I would still had that text to show you guys. She said, call the U.S. Embassy. We at, um... She named her grandmother's yard. We had their property. We had Deeplo, the village. You know what I'm saying? She, she, she ain't leave out no details where we was at. You know what I'm saying? Please call them. Come get us. Whatever. This is where we'd be. And she loves to ride. She yeah, to plan. I, I was so scared. <laughs> so, um, so at the end of so, we just hours and hours went by. Nothing never happened. Nothing never happened. Nothing never happened. And um, so eventually, I stayed up all night. Eventually, Dave, even David went back to sleep. Her brother went back to sleep. Mommy, Rosalind, she's underneath the bed sleep. So I stayed up all night. I didn't go to sleep until the sun came up. When the sun came up, then I fell asleep. And we woke up in the morning, you know, we go outside. And um, and what scared me most because her mother fainted and the aunt from next door was panicking too. Like, this like, is your stumping grounds. You live here in Haiti. So, if you scared, then sh I better be scared exactly. too. Exactly, <sighs> man. So, um, we woke up in the morning and you want to go ahead from that? So, we woke up that morning and everybody is you not know, talking about the event that occurred all between 
all of me and my family and stuff. So it turns out, well, my other cousin who is in one of another little house, I'll call them huts, but it was another hut. She came out and she was like, oh, it was just actually like me. I was like, you know, walking around and stuff. I didn't buy that BS. I don't buy that. And then somebody else had another story and was like, oh, it's actually the people who are guarding the land from people who are trying to steal still, animals, yeah, steal stock animals. and stuff. So they shoot off the gun. So anybody who is trying to plan, you know, to steal stock. Yeah, they just be shooting off warning yeah. shots. Yeah. But nobody ain't tell us this. We uh, don't know this. But what is so <laughs> contradicting is the fact that my aunt who lives there Panic. Got, got nervous too. Exactly. So if you live oh, there, you would, you would probably become accustomed to hearing gunshots. So why were you nervous? Hmm? Then another story came, um, cousin Carol saying it was her cousin. They was outside, they was there. It was him shooting a shot off. It was just too much. It was too much confusion, but. Too many people had too many different stories. You know what I'm saying? But we lived through it. We lived, we lived, lived through, through it. But, but that, that, those hours and and those moments, that feeling, bro, as a man, I just felt like, yo, I ain't going out like no buster. You ain't finna just come here and just take me and my family. We finna, I'm finna fight with whatever I got in me. It ain't just finna go down like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I just was thinking about my, my children too the most. I ain't never think about like in that moment, in that moment, I thought about life just, it like it slowed down. I just thought about it so deep. It's like, wow, man. Like, damn, I'm leaving my kids like this. I'm mean, old, far from them. Leaving them like just like this without a father, like that hurt me the most. Just thinking that I could possibly die tonight. And um, so the next day, Rosalind, she was ready to go. Ready to go. Morning, like woke up. They had somebody had fresh um, what's the name of the dish? Bouillon. They had fresh bouillon for you. I'm talking about. Oh my God, fresh from fresh cow. I never taste no food like that bouillon. Bouillon like that. is like a soup. It has like vegetables in it. It has boy. Beef. Yeah, beef boy. Boy is like flour condensed. It so good. So, so good. Carrots. It's just like, Bouillon's just so popping. Yeah, I know so this good. is a long video, but we we, we, we just want to tell y'all everything. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So bear with us. Bear with us. Hope this, hopefully this yeah. story is interesting to you guys. Yeah. Um. So next day, Rosalind, she was ready to go. Rosalind sat on the porch. She didn't eat no Bouillon. She, you know, the people of the village, they fished us nice Bouillon, her family. And she, she did not eat nothing. Nah, so nothing. She was that. ready to go. She yeah. like, no, I, I'm not staying here another night. Let's go to a hotel. <laughs> like, I damn near died. Like, no, that's crazy. That was like a purge. If you see the movie Purge, that's basically what was happening outside of that door. Like, you know, when you're inside in the purge, when they're inside of the house and they're just scared and waiting. And it's hot. I'm talking about it's hot. Ain't no window open in this, this room. It's hot, hot, hot. No air circulation. So, you know, eventually we get to a hotel. And, um, oh yeah, I mean, I left out one detail. So we leave the village, everybody, you know, trying to finesse money up out of us. Cause they know that we're leaving. You know, we're so leaving. pile of people come out of nowhere. Trying to finesse some money. So, uh, for Uncle, Uncle Toto, Uncle Toto. Bonacin? Yeah, Bonacin. Um, him, he put a finesse game. He got me in finesse game. Uncle a little player. So Uncle, Uncle, he done put, we in like two vehicles. So Uncle put, he got two women's. That he done that came for the front yeah, funeral. He got two people. women there. So he done put one, he done slid one in one of the cars. That's not Velocity, that was put on weekend. Oh, Ricky. Yeah. Then um he had the other then he done slid another woman in our car. I'm like, dang, he got he got a lot going on. He play a player. You know what I'm saying? So we slide, we gotta drop them off in um, Port au Prince. We were supposed to be dropping them off but our hotel not our hotel not um What? Uh um, our hotel is before Port au Prince, the hotel we stayed at. Mm -hmm. So you know what I'm saying? So we got them, we got them with us, so we got, you know, they chilling with us, whatever, whatever. Eventually Carol go drop them off and you know, we just relaxed at the hotel that last day. It was we stayed a, at the Calico Beach Resort too. So if you ever go to Haiti and you want somewhere to stay, it is the Real Calico. nice. And the guy who actually owns it, he's from Miami. Mir Miramar, right? Oh yeah, yeah, Miramar. He's from Miramar. He's from Miramar. So he was a good dude. You know, so we real the good great vibe. hospitality. They have, I think it was like from three to seven or something. They have unlimited drinks unlimited and stuff drink, like that. Get, get loaded, so I'm saying. And they have like rum runners, everything like that. You can't get a margarita though. But <laughs> anyways, if you're there, Hotel Calico, keep that 
crazy. If you want to stop by a hotel, <laughs> or, you know, you just stay wherever people stay. I know we went to a lot of different houses. It was a different situation. It was some houses we went to that had a little electricity that had different things, but you know, we particularly stayed a couple nights, you know, it was in the village. It was, it was that real life. It was that real life. And it just made me appreciate life so much more. And I met a lot of great people there. And, um, you know, I hope to see them one day here living in America and so they can have the opportunities. A lot of kids, man, humble kids. You know what I'm saying? This one kid, man, I shot him like 20. All right, guys, we got to stop it. We know we've been talking so much, you know what I'm saying? That to the recorder, it stopped on me, guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed that long story. That could be like a little movie story. You can sit back and eat your popcorn and watch that story there. And please remember, if you haven't already, go ahead and comment, like this video, subscribe to our channel, and continue to help us grow, share our content to other people, please. We love y'all. We thank y'all for watching. Much love from the woods world. We love you.